changing and embracing the new. How does it feel knowing that the 20-year-old iPod is somehow still alive and kicking? Well, it's it's great. It, it's really great. You know, the Mac has been around since the 80s, right? So, and it's still alive and kicking. So having an iPod still around, um, you know, still marks, you know, 20 years ago when this all started. And so it's great. You know, the company is a very different company from, you know, those 20 years. Most people, maybe, you know, maybe a lot of the, the listeners and viewers don't even know that iPods existed because they've grown up without them. You know, a lot of them, they grew up with only their iPhone as their first product. I know my kids did, right? And so, so it's just really amazing how much change can happen um, in, in 20 years or even 10 years, you know, let's just go back 10 years after the iPod as well. So uh, it's, it's truly astounding and could never have imagined it turned all the way into this. And now Apple's the the most valuable company in the world and has been for a while now. Right. And I'm curious if, what your thoughts are on, on why the iPod has endured for so long. Well, I think the iPod, you know, it's kind of Walkman 2.0. If you grew up and you ever, you know, I was a teenager when the Walkman came out of 12 or 13, something like that. And it was like, it rocked your world. And you always went back and it was such an emotional attachment to something because it was, it empowered you to have your music the way you wanted it, take it anywhere with you. And it was yours. You're not sharing it with your brothers and sisters and your parents and they're all screaming about this over the home stereo. It was yours, right? And so if you think of fast forward, what we did was we were able to do that again for a different generation and give them that same emotional suit and as emotional and superpower for music uh with the ipod and that to me is just it's just it's wonderful to know that we were able to continue that and it was such a touchstone for not just kids of that generation but for for all kinds of people of all ages you know fashionistas and sports stars and hollywood movie stars and you know all around the world you know you saw the white headphones coming out of their ears all around the uh, around the globe and and so to imagine um you know, imagine that at the time when we were building that, I could have never seen it. But then to see it actually happen and take root, that's what's so, you know, it, it feels really good. And I think, you know, a lot of people, you know, still remember those iPod days. Like it was, it was truly a superpower. Like, yes. And now the white, white headphones and uh, continue with the iPhone and even in the AirPods as well. So uh, just, uh, you know, it's pretty neat to see. But the scroll wheel, all of it was just, it kind of blew my mind just scrolling through the wheel, like listening to music and really just scrolling through the wheel because it just seemed like such a, a cool tactile thing. Yeah, it's a uh, visceral feeling. It's like, well, yeah, you, we totally. could have just had buttons. We could have had all that. But that wheel set it apart. Most people, when they saw the face of the device, they were like, is that a speaker? And like they didn't even know what right. that thing was, especially in the early ones. And, you know, it just set it apart from all the myriad of gadgets that were all black and buttons and screens. And they were all kind of, they looked all about the same. This really stood out 